And we're back here on the streets of Lincoln, Nebraska, as we take the Hysteria Podcast Tour Summer 2020 on the road. And what we're doing is we're basically coming to the streets to talk to the people that are walking the streets to find out exactly what's going on in their minds with everything. We've got uh, the race tension still going on, plus some other things that are going on in this world. And and we hear a lot of stuff on the news, and we, we look at social media, and a lot of times we think that the pulse of what's going on in America comes from the news and comes from social media, but we thought we would get to the people and actually find out and uh, recently we were able to uh, go up to uh, northwest Iowa and talk to some people up there and now we're on the streets of Lincoln Nebraska the great state of Nebraska and uh, we've got Dan Dozell with me and we've got a guy that we just kind of pulled off the streets Jonah is his name and we're gonna ask him some questions about what he thinks what's going on from a college perspective and uh, Jonah thanks for joining us today and just kind of to get things started um, as a college student the things that are going on in this world right now I would imagine are pretty important because as you look to the future, you want to be able to have a world that you graduate, can get a job, and be productive instead of a world that's divisive and at war with each other. Yeah, I mean, I totally agree with that 100%. I, I think that's definitely a thing we want for sure. You know, Jonah, one of the uh, things that I've been wondering about, and maybe you have a thought on this, if this officer in Minneapolis, Derek Chauvin, if he is convicted of murder, as it looks like he, he probably will be, do you have any thought on uh, maybe what sort of sentence might be appropriate uh, for, uh, for that crime uh, that um, it seems that he, he committed? Any idea? Um, well, I think it's, uh, it's pretty like tough, obviously, to determine, you know? I mean, many people might argue that, you know, well, obviously, it, George Floyd's death wasn't justified in any way, and uh, I feel like his, the, uh, the officer's punishment should be to the highest degree so possible maybe, uh, may, maybe what, what, do you think, would life in prison without parole, would that be too harsh, do you think, or not? Possibly, maybe not with, without parole, but maybe a life sentence would, would be justified, perhaps? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's, tough, it's really tough to say, you know. Like, right, right. I think the justice system is far more uh, qualified at handling it. You but bet. you know, uh, there's there's a lot of things you know wrong with the justice system too. So sure, sure. you sound like a protester. No. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. We're with Jonah here on the streets of Lincoln, Nebraska, and Jonah, a college student. What are some of the, I guess, ideas, or what's the feeling, the mood of some of the students, or your colleagues, or your peers, friends, even uh, about everything that's going on? What's the sentiment you get from them? Obviously, there are a lot of people who are extremely upset with uh, injustices. Uh, you know, police brutality is something that a lot of people are speaking out on because it's it's not really justified if there's an innocent person doing things that you know and and they they're killed even for you know and they're, they're innocent you know a lot of people you'll hear them say we live in you know our country it's innocent until proven guilty but in the, you know certain situations they they're guilty until proven innocent so and I guess the case of George Floyd, a lot of people argue, oh, well, he, the, the officer act, uh, acted as judge, jury, and executioner in that situation. Right. So a lot of people aren't happy about that, you know, because, you know, if you want a, a system where you're innocent until proven guilty, you have to treat people as if they were innocent until proven guilty. So that is one way that I guess people, uh, like my peers, that's one way, like, I, way they're thinking, I would say for sure is that. Yeah that mentality you know that we need to start treating people as if they are innocent because that's the way the system works yeah. but you know obviously if there's a real threat and people's lives are actually at risk I think an officer should take measures to both defend himself and you know other people around so there are instances I suppose when you know force is necessary but it's really a case by case and it's, it's a gray area you know like Nothing in, in reality is black and white. And so, so, Antoine, just as we start the conversation, just give us your thoughts on things that are going on right now as you see them. I think things are awkwardly backwards. I mean, I'm an 80s baby. You know, the way I look at it, a lot of things are being looked at it from a wrong, culture diverse eye, eye view to me. I mean, I'm colorblind. You know, with all the things that's going on, people forget about unity. I mean, honestly, it's unity. It don't matter what part of the country you're in, north, south, east, west, midwest, coast-wide, 
it don't matter. I mean, people looking at things from the wrong point of view. What do you think it would take to make some change? People want change, but what do you think it would take to really get the change that people are looking for? It would take understanding and maturity. Just overall maturity, yo. That's it. And a lot of people are too afraid to break themselves to be mature enough to understand this person or that person. It, 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 don't, it don't take much. It might take, just like we sitting there talking, it might take five seconds to pass judgment, but it might take less than that to even understand a person and say, okay, I'm comfortable with this person. Or, you know, even though we have different hair, different color, different texture, right. just take, understand it, man. Yeah. Now, one of the things I noticed, you're wearing a, a Bulls cap. Yes. I've got my LA Kings hat, so I'm from LA, Lakers fan. Chicago. Yeah, okay, Chicago. <laughs> so I can look at you and judge you as a Bulls fan and be like, oh, you're a Bulls fan, that's horrible. Yeah. But you know what, it's, it's, it's different because, you know, sports and everything is, is a different, different world. But it's like, why do we do that when it comes to other things, you know? I mean, it's like, we, we, like you said, you, you, you have to have maturity, but you judge people based on what you see, and yet you don't even know who they are, and they could be really cool people. This is the funniest thing I would say. That would say, I never understood this thing I got older. They say tomato, tomato, ketchup, salsa. Yeah. Same thing. Right. Still deal with tomatoes, man. I mean, it's the same thing. It may have a different texture. It may be cut a different way. It may taste it, but it's, it's the same thing. Yes. It's the same thing, you know what I mean? That's how I wake up every day. It's like they got different waters. You got Fiji, you got Apple. You got this brand. It's all still water. Yeah. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. I mean, I, that's how simple I am. You know, Antoine, I love your laid-back attitude, and, and you know, like San said, I mean, and we all know, I mean, there's a lot of tension today. You know, what what do you what do you make of like? Um, I mean, obviously, we, we all know how how wrong and and th this murder of George Floyd. I mean, anybody with with any sense at all is going to see that for what it is, you know, and and, yeah. and just and just horrible thing. What do you make of, of, of the response of, of people from from various races? But there seem to be a lot of pent up emotion and feeling and and uh, you know some people say well you know we, we were in the lockdown so that may be contributed but obviously I mean you know we, we live in a nation where where there, there, there's been a real you know troubled past and so a lot of that is still now being churned back up because of this um, yeah. so what where, where do you where do you kind of place the, the your thought on why why now why did this seem to light the fuse I mean there have been other things there have been Ferguson there have been the other ones but yeah. man, th this one it just it just blew up so why is that Honestly, like from a public eye view, it's just my opinion. Yeah. It's, it's been a lot of things over years and time. Yeah. But my overall opinion does not rank over the public. Yes. A lot of things has happened that people don't even know about. Yes. Like, honestly. So for that, this to go public and everyone just lose it. I think about this at the end of the day. People riot, you tear down markets, where do you shop at? You know, if these folks come to my neighborhood, tear down my market, and I got to figure out where do I shop, the safety of my daughter. I mean, right. it, it is a big society, but I've had at least five people in my life personally killed behind this situation. Oh, wow. You know, and everybody who ride it don't even know the people in my life that's died behind this situation. Yes. And they're, they're not going to change the fact that they're gone off their actions, you know? And it doesn't matter the color issue, man. It's like, yeah. you can't change the things. It, it, it happened. But it's about everyone's actions that's put toward it that, that had a reaction. Yes. You don't see me out here losing my mind. Yes. I mean, for what? Yes. I still got to wake up in the economy, produce funds, make yes. money, um, invest in the stock. At the end of the day, once everything's burnt down, who's going to rebuild it? Wow. What I'm the a, person that's out here working, trying to help rebuild it, because I got to still live here. Man, what an amazing, gotta live here. amazing perspective. It's just, it's just an honest fact, you know what I mean? I mean, I can have my opinion, whoever doesn't like it, that's their fault. That's their fault you right. know, I mean, what are they working toward? You know, there's, there's two ways to do things. You can either be a vandal or you can be a builder. Mm. I learned that you can structurally be positive and uplift and build something without being negative. Yes. But based off the reactions of a negative crowd doesn't mean you have to react in that manner. Mm. By Quinn and Caden. And uh, we'll start with you, Caden. Uh, when you look at the things going on today in society and what's going on with the racism and the rioting and the violence and people wanting change, so there's good and bad, uh, just generally, what are your thoughts on, on the, the state of affairs that you see going on today? Um, I think as of right now, it's necessary. There's a lot of things that aren't going well in our society, and I feel like we've just been brushing it under the rug for too long. So I think it's good that we're seeing change and that things are people are talking about it and stuff like that. When you look at the future, I know people want change now, but at some point, things may die down and we get back to normal life. But to have change for the future, make permanent change and not just change for now, what do you think needs to be done? I think the first step is not letting things go back to normal and holding people accountable. I don't think 
it's realistic to say that there is going to be a different future if we let it die down. So I think like the proper way to go about it is just to continue, you know, speaking out and like making sure holding people accountable and getting policies, voting, stuff like that, just changing. Do you think your generation, because we've had people talk about change over the years, and every generation there's a change, something happens. It seems every 25, 30 years an event happens and, and we want change, but it never really sticks. Do you think this is the generation, you guys are the generation that can make that change stick? I think so. I, I mean, in recent events, I feel like we haven't really slowed down once where we started. like. As soon as the whole George Floyd incident happened, there was uproar and it hasn't died down since. And I think that's really, really important that we just keep that alive. So I think at this rate, yeah, for sure. Do you think it's something that can happen on a national level to start? Or do you think it's something that's gonna happen at the, roots, the grassroots level, the community level, and then grow from there? I think if we want any change at the national level, it needs to start in the grassroots, like in the communities that you're in, even in rural communities that don't see these things, you know, there's no protests in central Nebraska, but you know, getting, talking about it and getting like the ideas out there, I feel like doing that in rural communities will, you know, eventually transform into like on a national level. Do you think rural communities, you mentioned rural communities, so you've got the urban cities and the rural communities. Do you think this, uh, this is not just as important issue in rural communities as it is, as it is in, the, in the big cities? Yeah, I feel like, especially in rural communities, even though, you know, they might not see the racism, like, in their own communities, I definitely feel like it's something that needs to be acknowledged because Ultimately, everyone just, we need to educate everyone and like fill people in on the information that they might not understand. And in rural communities where there's not much diversity or, you know, there aren't, you know, acts of violence towards innocent people, they might not understand and they might think that it's not a big deal. So I think just educating and making sure that everyone's on the same page of like where the good and the bad are drawn. You mentioned kind of rural communities, not too much diversity, but do you think that it's a it's a people issue because it doesn't necessarily have to be black, white, or race on race. It could just be people on people where there's problems too. So do you think ultimately it gets it gets beyond the race issue to where people just have to be nice to people in general, and then that will bleed over into the race thing, or do you think it's two separate things? I think the people being nice to people is a good outlook, but until we address the race thing, we can't have that. And Quinn, what about you as we talk about this? Um, when you take a look at things that are going on right now, how do you see it? I just think it's a disaster. And I feel like you guys were kind of talking about generations earlier. And I feel like our generation, Gen Z, is we're tired of it. And we're not going to tolerate anything that's going on anymore. When we, when we see injustice in the world, we fight it. And I just like I'm really proud of us for understanding and recognizing that this is a serious issue and that we we can't accept it anymore. You know, one of the things that I've heard from people and talking with people is that, you know, when you don't have diversity and uh, like Caden was saying, sometimes in the rural communities, there's not diversity. And so it's not an issue and people might not think of it as an issue. Do you think that's wrong for people outside of those communities just to assume that somebody doesn't care about an issue because it doesn't affect them directly? I mean, you probably shouldn't make general assumptions about groups of people, but if they're detached from that situation, they can't fully grasp the concept and the impact that George Floyd's death has had on communities. And so I think it's important to recognize and educate and have discussions with them, be like, do you understand why this is so impactful and important? Because even in communities, it's like that racism is still an issue. It's an issue everywhere, and it's something that we're always going to have to fight and deal with. When you look at solutions, what do you see as things to solve this problem? How can we solve the issue of racism? The issue of racism, that's a great question. I or, think or even just begin. I mean, it maybe not even have a, a, an answer of solution, but how mm -hmm. can we just begin to start getting to the point of change that we want? Well, I think the first thing a lot of people should do is recognize that racism is an issue. Like, I think a lot of people were like, yeah, the civil rights movement happened. It's done. Everyone got their rights and they're great. But that's absolutely not the truth. And that's not what's going on at all. And so the first step is education and telling everyone and educating people that like it's still an issue and so prevalent in our day to day lives, even in the city of Lincoln. 
and that's probably the most important first step and then from there people can elect officials who care and who will make the policy changes and then those uh, yeah it's just yeah. education is probably the most important thing right now yeah that seems to be kind of one of the underlining themes is education yeah. learning and especially if you don't know educate yourself because then you will find out and that's what I've been learning and talking with people is there's issues that go on that I'm not even aware of exactly that just by talking with people I hear their stories and what they go through because what doesn't affect me might affect you and by talking to you I, I learn and understand yeah. what you go through and one thing that I think is really cool is on social media so much I have seen people posting about bail funds and resources and books you can educate yourselves on films you can watch documentaries you can watch just like resources for people who may not fully grasp the gravity of the situation to learn and understand why these things are happening and why they're an important issue to combat you know uh Martin Luther King Jr. wrote his speech, and he visioned a world in which his kids could have this perfect world, so to speak, where we all get along. Mm -hmm. And it's been a number of years now. We still haven't gotten there. Do you think that one day we will get there? I want to think so, and I really think we can. I just think it's it starts at the base level of, like, reminding your kids like everyone is equal everyone deserves the same rights we should never discriminate or judge on any basis and just really starting to like educate ourselves like i was saying earlier i think education is the fundamental thing we can do to begin to get to that place because we're far from a perfectly equal society far from it the conversation has been with different people i've talked with brandon wade i've talked with daniel west i've talked with roland wiley uh, some black men sharing their thoughts and uh, the underlining theme is we need to talk to everybody and we need to start the dialogue and the conversation so we've hit the streets we're on the road in Lincoln Nebraska and we found somebody who is all the way from Los Angeles California and I would imagine he's also wearing a shirt from MIT and I know he was telling me a little bit before is that he's got a friend that that goes to MIT and he was uh, in school in Milwaukee, Wisconsin himself. So he's been around, so we thought we'd ask him, his, uh, ask him some questions about what's going on in the world from his perspective, another college-age student. And, and you were telling me that you've got a lot of friends uh, in Los Angeles and other places that you've met that are from different races, different uh, cultures. Uh, how has that been? What's your experience been like with these uh, various friends that you have going on? I mean, it's different with everybody. Um, everybody has different views on uh, things that are going around in the world, but I mean, you know, we're all spread out right now, you know, being in college and, uh, you know, briefly talking to everybody uh, with what's been going on. I mean, everybody has different opinions and, uh, you know, uh, how they think. You mentioned different opinions. When you guys talk, is, are those opinions respected by everybody and you guys kind of understand? Or do you guys kind of stand your ground and only believe what you think you should believe? Uh, I think it depends on, on who you're talking about because there's obviously people who, who will listen to other people's opinions and, you know, take it in but then there's other people who just think you're outright wrong um, so I definitely think it's uh, uh, the, the person who you're talking to uh, it can go both ways um, but typically uh, within the people that I've talked to you know they're open to, to hearing you know other sides now your friends coming from different ethnicities different cultures what's it been like having friends from different cultures and different races it's nice because you uh, you get to learn about new things you know you're not just in one you know like because i'm a white man so if i just had friends that are white you know i can't expand in you know diversity so it's nice to learn a little bit about that what would you think would be some of the solutions moving forward with this racial tension that we have where we could solve the problem of racism uh, i mean to me i think it's pretty simple just you know everybody in this earth you know we we're all created you know as one person and you know, nobody's above anybody else. So no matter the color, no matter the race, no matter what you believe in. Um, so moving forward, if we just all, you know, walk together and treat everybody, you know, as equals like we should, then I think we'll be fine. If you were, if you were to see somebody out there and, and somebody was wondering what it would be like or what we should do to kind of get along, what do you think some solutions might be to get along? Um, talk it out. Uh, <clears throat> and just if you talk it out then you can find out the other person's side of the story and you can tell them your side of the story and then you become friends again and it's all good one of the things that i've learned through the previous podcast is we need to start a dialogue we need to start a conversation we need to include as many people as we can and so getting out on the streets 
And coming to the heartland, because I'm in L.A., and so I get a perspective of people in L.A., but what about other people? We were in uh, northwestern or uh, Iowa, Okaboji area, and talked to some people there, and now we're on the streets of uh, Lincoln, Nebraska. And we've got Jack here with us, who's a, a Husker, a UNL student. And, uh, and Jack, just as we start the conversation, what are some of your thoughts just in general on some of the things that are going on right now in our country? I think it's awesome, and I think this is long overdue, and it's like an important conversation that the entire country's having, and I'm excited to be a part of it. Now, from your perspective, when you take a look at things, uh, especially from a like, college perspective and on campus, what, with your classes and things, what has kind of been the, the, perce uh, the reception of things that are going on on campus? Um, I'd say that UNL has always been a very progressive school, so I think it's always been inclusive. That's coming from my perspective, though. I can't really speak for other people, but from the conversations that I've been a part of, it seems very respective and respectful to people of all different walks of life. I would say. Yeah. What, what do you think as we look, because one of the things that people are talking about is solutions. You know, we have this issue, mm -hmm. and like you talk about progressive moving forward, but there has to be a solution. And right now we're kind of in this frenzied mode, and it doesn't look like we're going to have a solution right now because of everything that's going on. But down the road, we need to have solutions. What do you think could be some of those solutions? Uh, really, with this movement, I did not know anything about systemic racism before this, and that really opened my eyes to everything involving that. And I'm, I'm no expert on anything, but... I definitely think we need to start looking at that and I learned about like school districts for example because Omaha is one of the most segregated school systems in like the Midwest and yes. it's just like those like black concentrated neighborhoods and they have terribly poor funding and that's just not fair to children growing up with that exactly. so I think starting with issues like that can really help in all different kinds of ways but so it sounds like just learning about the issue, educating ourselves, and understanding the issue would be a start. What about people to people? I mean, you know, you don't know us. You just kind of sat down with us, start talking to us. But, you know, as we sit here as people talking, you know, I value your opinion and what you have to say because I want to know it. And I think that's one of the things that's missing is sometimes people don't value what the other person has to say, and it just becomes dismissive, and then there's a divide. I think it's really easy to talk, but it's hard, harder to listen. So actually to hear somebody, what their experience is, why they think the way they think, that's super important to have that empathy yes. to really understand another person. Do you think one of the things we've been also asking is, is you know, alternative things, okay? We have politics, like I said, you have education. We were, we were, we were asking people about kind of the faith-based perspective on things. You know, some people are religious in certain, uh, with certain uh, religions and that, uh, and there's certain beliefs and stuff. Do you think that if we had like the, the church community or the religious community or the faith-based community come in, do you think that could make a difference too and not just rely on politics only? Definitely. I'm from like a I'm a Christian. I come from like a non-denominational church, and uh, I was kind of surprised with how much they spoke up, just because I didn't really see that coming necessarily, because it's like yes. a white majority church. Mm. But um, they just talked about Bible verses like "stand up for the people that don't have a voice, speak yes. out against oppression." It's our duty to hear those people, yes, and fight for them just as much as we would fight for ourselves. You know, that's very interesting, Jack. And you know, I, I too have heard and seen, it seems like, a, a, a good number of churches and, and Christians speaking up and saying, hey, you know, we have to be part of the solution here. Mm -hmm. uh, just as you mentioned, you know, the systemic racism has to be addressed. Do you think uh, ultimately across the board, it, it's ultimately, ultimately going to boil down to a heart issue? I mean, is, is, you know, politics and all these different laws and rules, but, but where does the heart fit into this? Do, is, is that ultimately where, where we need to be turning and, and even asking, asking God to help with our heart? Do you, do you think that's maybe a key in this? I definitely think so. It, everything comes from the heart. Yeah. So that's, I try to go on a walk every day and pray about it at the Capitol. Not, not for peace, but for change that leads to peace. Oh, that's beautiful. And I wish that people could have, would open their hearts to that too. Yeah. And I, yeah. I know that I still have so much learning to do, but that's just my little part. So, see, yeah. When you talk about change, I, I find that fascinating because you're taking your steps for yourself. And that's what I think people don't understand is you don't always have to have this group change, this group mentality, these group uh, you know, conversations. That's helpful. But also, if you're just doing something on your own, that could be beneficial too. And, and especially for someone like you at the college level, imagine all those students on UNL just doing something by themselves to affect change, whether it's help somebody or whether it's to you know just pray about it or whether it's just to do your interactions with people, just something from the campus of UNL would make with all the people there and the students there, and if each one made just a little change, that would e equal huge change in Lincoln. 
Exactly. Everything starts in the community. And, well, as an individual, then the community, then the nation. Yes. And just, I'm trying to think, like, I come from a super small town of a thousand people, and it's more of like an all lives matter type of town. Yes. And I used to be that type of person, too, because I was like, why does it have to be, why yes. has everybody got to be different? Right. But I, you have to have that perspective change of, it doesn't mean any that nobody else matters less. It's just that they need to be equal. And that's, it's more of all lives can't matter until black lives can matter. Yes. And like something as simple as posting on social media, I had so many conversations that came from that of people that wouldn't have been exposed to it unless I would have done that. Yes. So even something as small as that can have a big impact. And I think people need to realize that, that small change leads to big change. Yes. And Taylor, one of the things that we've been discussing is the current state of affairs here in America, obviously with the racism and uh, issues of racism. And was just wondering from your perspective, what's your thoughts on things going on? I think that a big part of what's contributing to the at least added drama and a lot of the hindrances that the Black Lives Movement um, is running into is a lack of um, consistent communication. There's a lot of terminology that's being dis um, discerned and understood differently between different groups. Um, there's not a lot of people actively looking into and understanding the background to things that are going on, which makes a lot of misunderstandings and stances that are uneducated and then more conflicted um, more easily. Um, I think this is all st spurred a lot by long-standing issues that we haven't effectively handled, but people oversimplify. What do you what do you think moving forward? Because everyone's talking about solutions, what we can do to solve the problem. What do you think might be some of the issues, or how are some ways we might be able to go and address racial relations? A lot of people want to establish more laws and others want to defund the police or police reform, which are all things we've tried doing for years and years and years. But when you make a law, only people who actively want to follow the law are the ones who are going to follow it. So I don't believe that implementing more laws is going to do anything. I believe that although it's a much longer solution, the best thing we can do and the most effective thing we can do is start act um, actively instilling a more communal mindset in children by instilling a better more accepting mindset in the next generation you ensure the future because you're not going to change hearts by putting new laws you need to actively connect with people changing a heart will change their perspective and change their interaction with the world you know one of the things we've been uh asking people, because you mentioned laws, mm. and, and how laws might not be the answer, more laws anyways. Do you think any like uh, people of faith or things like that, do you think some of those alternative uh, ways of, of how we treat people and how we interact with people could be a, a way to help uh, people get along? Um, I actually used to work in youth ministry so and go to a Bible college, so that's a stance wow. that I actually take this from. Yes. I believe that... Yes, just to put it simply, yes. I believe that the biblical principles that were taught and that come from the Bible are what an ideal society would be for accepting people. Um, when ministry is done right, we're told to accept people as they are, not to judge them for the struggles they might have, yeah. but to accept them as something better than ourselves. And I think that when you're interacting with someone or something that you're not familiar with, I grew up in a small town in Iowa, so almost entirely white. We maybe had three non-white people in, our, in my entire school. Wow. So coming to Omaha and going to college in a much better, bigger city, it was something I was not familiar with. Yeah. But accepting people as something even better than you are, if not at least yourself, I mean, as the same as yourself, mm -hmm. is what will actively make you treat them in that better way. Accept people as they are, not what they've been, but what they could be.